Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about another contemporary technique, and that is tongue ram. If you want to see the other videos in this series, I will link them in the cards and in the description, and if you have a technique that you want me to talk about next, please let me know. Uh, just a disclaimer, if you hear doors slamming in the background, they're working on the units next to mine, and obviously I can't control that, so you might hear some talking or some slamming of doors. So tongue ram is a pitched percussive technique. And that seems like a little bit of a contradiction, but it isn't a sustained sound, and it's created with percussive air almost, so it is considered a percussive technique. If you don't know what it sounds like, as you can see, I'm literally rolling the flute into my mouth to do it. And that's kind of the sticking point of this technique, at least for me. It's something that we don't do naturally. While some of the percussive techniques are hard just because you're coordinating things or you're moving your tongue in an unusual way, this doesn't have a traditional embouchure, so you also have that factor to work on and figure out. The basic theory behind the air of a tongue ram is a very, very fast burst of air that is stopped very immediately with your tongue. So. It's almost a hut sound, like it starts with an H and ends with a very hard T. Doing that into the flute gives this thunking sound. Um, I kind of think of it as like you're stopping a bottle and like that sound that almost is a tongue ram on a bottle. The difficulty of it is coordinating the air with the fingers, of course, because that's flute and also making your air as fast as possible so you don't get this sound. You don't want that extra air, you just want... And yes, I've been practicing this for years and all the disclaimers that I have put in every one of these videos where I say like, this is what I do for a living and this is what I practice, so yes, I'm going to be better at it immediately, or at least in these videos, because clearly this is what I do for a living but that is the difficulty and that is the thing that you have to practice is getting your air fast enough qu quick enough so that you don't have the like lead into it in robert dick's book the other flute where he really breaks down all the contemporary techniques he says the same thing that the goal of this sound is to not have that lead in so the point of these videos is to show you how to practice them and how to work on them and that's kind of difficult because the sound is not easy to figure out. I think this is probably one of the contemporary techniques that took me the longest to learn. Um, and it's only recently that I really started having as much control as I do over it. And that's just through practice and through continual work, obviously. I think the starting point is to get comfortable with the airflow. And I think this is one that is best practiced away from the flute first. I think messing around with the flute and getting kind of a general idea of the sound and what you should be doing is good, and then moving away so you really have the control. The same way I talked about flutter tongue and slap tongue being practiced away from the flute, so you're just kind of going then you can get control of the air and you can bring it back to the flute. Um, I'm gonna work on just the head joint for a second just because it's a little easier and there's no fingers involved. So to make the sound, you wanna seal the embouchure. And that's kind of a difficult thing to get used to because we're told never to seal the embouchure. We're, we blow over the embouchure and this is completely counterintuitive. It's not really that difficult. You just have to kind of try it a few times, put the embouchure on your face and see where it seals the best. And then you add in the air. And then once you're more comfortable with that and you feel like you're getting the percussive sound, and at this point you're not worrying about like the air or how much of how efficient it is everything like that, you're like you're just trying to get the sound to work, then you can move on to the rest of the flute. Based on the C flute's resonance, tongue rams sound a major seventh-ish lower than the fingering that you're using. 
that's again based on acoustics and everything like that it's not an exact science and the lower flutes are actually a minor seventh which is weird but sure um this means that you're not gonna get exact pitches you're not gonna like if you have perfect pitch you're probably not gonna go that is exactly this pitch it, it while it is a sound that we're creating it's also an acoustic result to air so as a composer i would recommend not relying on the pitches to be exact uh, you obviously can notate pitches, and these sounds should be accompanied with a bass pitch that we're using, um, but just don't expect it to sound exactly how you want it to. Quite honestly, adding the body of the flute into the mix isn't that difficult. You just finger the pitch and do the same thing. Um, and again, as you get more comfortable, you can start thinking about the efficiency of the air and making the sound just the sound and not the extra air sound. How many times can I say sound in one sentence? Um, but it really is just a matter of getting the air down. Once you get that, it does what it's supposed to. Um, the only difficulty that it presents in context is the setup time. Obviously going from this to this is hard. It's not something that's gonna be immediate and it means that you do have to have some setup time. Uh, that's something that a composer needs to uh, take into account and it's something that you definitely need to be aware of when you're doing something with a composer. Is something that you can practice. Obviously you can get more efficient at getting from normal playing to uh, tongue ram and back, but there still will always be some delay just because you're physically moving the instrument. Once you're in tongue ram position, there is a limit to how fast you can go. That's a personal thing, and it's a practice thing, and it's also an efficiency thing, but it is something that you need to be aware of, and composers need to be aware of, is like, you can't play incredibly virtuosic passages in tongue ram. It's not gonna work. That action is way slower than a traditional articulation is, and unlike double tonguing, there's no way to like use the reset as an articulation. It always has to be the forward, like conscious action to create the sound. So you're gonna have, again, reset time. You can hear that at some point, I don't have enough time to get the really aggressive going and it starts sounding just like weird air. <laughs> um, and that's something that, again, you have to be aware of, you have to talk to composers about, and that composers, as people writing for flute, need to be aware of. It's not just our responsibility to know our instrument. Obviously, we know it better than you. But one of the things that I've seen is that composers kind of expect performers to be able to do anything that the textbooks say we can. And especially with this kind of thing where there is a very wide range of ability and a wide range of f facility, you can't expect a performer to be able to play as fast as the one who tested it because it's a completely personal technique. And while, yes, like finger technique is something that we can all have a basis for, this isn't something where you can just go, hey, every flute player should be able to do this many tongue rams at this many beats per minute, and that is a baseline. That's not how this technique works, and it's not how playing really works anymore. And as a composer, that's something that you do really need to be aware of. And well, yes, these videos aren't really meant to be like composer lectures. I have another series for that. I think it's important to really realize that every single contemporary technique that I'm talking about has its own like set of rules and set of expectations. And you do have to be really careful to not expect too much or have the wrong expectations. If you guys like this video, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to support me more, check out my Patreon. I will be revamping my Patreon very, very soon to reflect this year's projects and this year's things. So the tiers are actually things that I'm doing now and not based on 52 weeks. And I will see you guys very soon.